720 WGN Radio. It's Iridian Fierro, and it's always a great time to talk about professional wrestling. And that's what we're going to do today. So joining me now is Court Bauer, the CEO of MLW Major League Wrestling. Court, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? Great. It's great to be. Hey, Chicago is such a great wrestling town. It's great to be on with you. I love being a pro wrestling fan, specifically in Chicago, because it's just such a great community. It's so awesome. I've been to MLW shows before in Seattle Stadium, and wow. it's it's just incredible. It's introduced me to a lot of talent. So I'm really excited that you guys are going to be back. And Seattle Stadium, it's already sold out. Talk to me about yeah. how you feel going into that show. Oh, we're pumped. We're pumped. It's the first time in five years we've been back to Cicero Stadium, a, a building we introduced to Chicago. I don't think it's I don't think it's been a wrestling building for some time. When we went there originally, Jim Cornette thinks that back in like the 60s, Buddy Rogers and that era of wrestlers were coming through it. And you can definitely feel there's some ghosts in that building. It's like the perfect place to see wrestling. It is, it is such a great place. The crowds are great. When you go through the uh the doors you go in there you hear bullhorns it feels like you're in arena mexico down to mexico i mean it it's a different type of experience than your usual wrestling show in chicago yeah it really is so uh like you said mlw is returning it's going to be in cicero stadium on may 11th and this is for a pay-per-view mlw azteca lucha and it's a collaboration mm -hmm. between mexico's top league in cmll talk to me about that relationship that you guys have and what that pay-per-view is going to feel like yeah, so we've been working on this one since last July. I wanted to come back to Chicago. It had been a long time. The last time we were in Chicago was 2019. MJF was in the company. Uh, you had guys like Hammerstone, Fat Two, and the MLW's changed a lot in five years. And now we have guys like Matt Riddle. We have Mystico as our world middleweight champion. We have strategic alliances with New Japan. Satoshi Kojima is our world heavyweight champion. So a lot has changed. And yet this year, this moment, we've seen more success this year than, than the history of MLW dating back to 2002. So I think a big part of that is just knowing what the fans want. The fans wanted a card like this and, you know, to sell out half a month in advance is huge. So we were playing this show with CMLL. We were having conference calls last July planning this show for May. So a lot of work went into it because we knew when we come to Chicago, we have to bring a big show. And, uh, and I think we've accomplished that. And we've seen that more and more companies have kind of partnered up and have been working together. Uh, talk to me about the importance of making those connections with other promotions like CMLL, like new Japan, and mm -hmm. what you found is key to kind of maintaining those relationships. Well, you know, um, for so long, I think, you know, you've seen kind of an empire kind of isolate out all these other organizations. And I think, you know, wrestling a million years ago used to be everyone working together in a regional sense. And I think that can happen. And I think these strategic alliances, like the one we have with New Japan and CMLL, uh, it, it helps. It helps. And, and it's a win-win for the talent. It's a win-win for the organizations. It's a win-win for the fans. They get to see great matches, matches they've never seen before, dream matches. And like, you can now go to Chicago and you're going to see Mystico. You're going to see Satoshi Kojima. You're going to see legends from Japan, the greatest stars of Mexico. I mean, Mystico himself, yeah. the biggest box office star of Mexico, the 21st century. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that covers a lot of territory and a lot of amazing talent. And he's, he's in his prime. Uh, and you're going to see up in the coming guys, the next generation guys like Star Jr., Willano 3 Jr., all these guys that are going to be the new wave from Lucha Libre for the next 15, 20 years. So you know, these alliances are great. They're building bridges. I think you have for the fans a shared content ecosystem where they can enjoy and track their matches. You'll, you'll see Mystico defend his title, and we might broadcast a match from Arena Mexico on MLW on Triller TV, or you might see... Uh, a match on New Japan World from MLW, like Kojima defend the world title. So it's like, it's just kind of like opens all these all these roads to opportunities that just typically fans haven't seen for 30, 40 years since the old era of wrestling where it was territories. But then you didn't have a few clicks to access all this stuff. You really had to do some work to find it. You don't have that problem anymore. So, Court, you are in a really special position. I feel like you've been able to experience so many aspects of wrestling, whether that be, you know, kind of behind the scenes or reporting and writing features. So now, you know, being yeah. the CEO through your career in wrestling, what have you enjoyed doing the most? What has given you the most joy? 
you know, I, I think it's like when you're working on something special mm -hmm. and no one knows it and you're able to keep it a secret and building and putting that all together and mm -hmm. keeping it intact. So when you roll it out and the, the satisfaction of seeing the fans excitement, the locker room's excitement, that's really a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Also developing talent, like the young talent and seeing them emerge. And then the light bulb goes off in as a performer for them, but also for the fans saying, Hey, this is someone I got to see. This is the next big thing. And that's kind of become my thing over the years is developing these guys from you know, discovering them at a regional level, put them on national stage, being on BN Sports or BN Sports in Espanol, our, our cable deal, mm -hmm. and being able to give them kind of a national stage to show what they got. And, you know, whether it was back in the early days of MLW 2002, people don't realize CM Punk's got his start in MLW and feuded with Raven in 2002, 2003. And then, you know, you go to 2017, 2018 era, you got guys like Matt Riddle, Shane Strickland, MJF all coming through. And now this new era coming up, guys like Akira, amazing talent that is very special. Delmi Exo, who's a great representative for the women's division. So you always got that new era. And to work with those guys is, 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 is phenomenal. It's such a rewarding experience. And I know you you mentioned the the women's division just now, so let's talk about that a little bit because yeah. you know, Salina de la Renta is now <laughs> the creative director of MLW's women's division. Can you talk about the impact that she's had on MLW? Yeah, so we've you know Selena was one of those like the 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 twenty seventeen class of MLW, the new generation, and so she started. She was probably like nineteen with MLW, and she trusts the process, and so she learned TV, and then she learn how to be a, a performer on TV at a young age. And then we brought her into to the production side, probably by the time she was 20, 21. So she's sitting along at the time, our, our office consisted of folks like Dr. Tom Pritchard, Jim Cornette, uh, Sammy Callahan. And she's sitting in these production meetings and learning the business and taking notes like she's in a, you know, she's getting her master's in wrestling with all these great minds around her. And so very soon thereafter, by 22, 23, we give her an opportunity to produce her own TV show and lo and behold, it's like the highest rated show we we did to that point in MLW on cable on BN Sports. And then we we do it again and again because it works. And so, you know, it's been amazing. So we said, look, we really want the women's division to have we want we want it to be authored and 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 by a woman for women and men, but but also really just it's important that the stories they're told in the women's division are authentic. And, you know, I think her, her impact on that's already been great. You know, it's the, she knows those journeys. She knows the women, how to present them better than anyone could. Uh, she has a great background in production. She's great with working with the talent. She's really already mentored some of the younger women on the division. Uh, and I, she's been able to, you know, she understands the art of packaging a star. So now she's applying what she's experienced and learned. And, and, you know, paying it forward, which is that's that's the sweet sauce in, in wrestling, is being, being able to pay it forward. And so she's been awesome working with us on that. And uh, she's got some big plans for the rest of the year. And, you know, it, it's, it is, it's first of all, it's also great to have uh, someone who is is very young yeah. uh, and, and give that person the opportunity to to be a matchmaker, to write, to be a part of the creative process, because I remember being my early 20s and you can knock on everyone's door but no one wants to a mentor you b no one wants to really give you an opportunity even as an assistant or even in a position higher so how do you ever learn how do you ever get to that point so then you get to this point where it's very suffocating in the wrestling business where you know you have just basically the same people in in kind of like an echo chamber just moving from one company to the other company doing the same stuff running the same place and you don't see all these great minds or potential great minds in the mix and 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 they're going to be great minds only by practicing their trade. You know, it's, they're not going to be necessarily hit a home run the first day, but they're going to understand, learn and adapt. And, and I think you have to give young talent behind the camera and in front of the camera, that opportunity to succeed or fail. And Selena's she's crushed it. And I, I love that you said that, you know, she was kind of just put in that seat right there with everyone to learn in that moment, because um, now look at what she's doing and she's so great. And I think that, one thing that us uh, women as fans that we it sucks to see that, you know, I feel like women are kind of an afterthought in in the roster and the match cards. So to have her directly involved, to have a woman behind there and kind of seeing, oh, this is what we would want to see. That's incredible. So I think she's the yeah. first Latina 
to be booking that entire an entire division in the U.S. So that's incredible on its own. But um, props to MLW for for doing yeah. that. But I'll say this too: like when, when I brought her, and I said, "Look, this is we want to start you at this level. My goal is for you to be like one of the top three people behind the scenes of the company at an executive level, yeah. not just creative, but understand how you run a business." And that was when she was 21, 22. And I said, "If you if you want that, I we will we will help you." get to that point. That's where I see your future. If you want it, it's up to you. And I'll say this, look, if something happened to me and uh, I just, I wasn't an MLW, I, I dropped dead. I mean, she's one of the candidates to take over MLW. She is, she's got it. And I, you know, a lot of people don't think about succession plans, especially promoters because they're in the moment, but I'll be like, she gets it. She knows how to work with talent. She knows how to run a business. She's be up. Outside of wrestling, she works a lot in TV and film, running businesses. So she gets it. And so I say, like, you you know, I would be very comfortable with someone like Selena Taylor rent to one day running MLW. And I think if that were to happen, mission accomplished. I did my job in allowing her to have the skill set, the experience and understanding how to do a very complicated job, a very high pressure job. I don't think she'd have a problem doing it. That's incredible. I we can all hope that that whatever we have or whatever we create goes into good hands. And of course, with a woman like Selena, I think that MLW would be in fantastic hands. Um, let's no doubt. <laughs> I want to talk to you about my first MLW show that I went to uh, because it was at Seattle Stadium. And that was the first time that I was kind of introduced to a lot of indie wrestlers. Um, yeah. So when I was there, you had guys like Sammy Guevara. You had Marco Stunt, Trey Miguel, mm -hmm. Ace Austin. You had the Lucha Brothers there. I saw, mm -hmm. I think, the last Lucha Brothers match before they went to AEW. And I remember... Yeah. The crowd is just so incredible. There was, uh, it's so lively. We had drums in the crowd. People were so angry. They were throwing their popcorn into the ring. There was so much going on, you know? But yeah. um, who in MLW that you've had over the years or who's someone that's on the roster now that you have really seen something special in? Because you've had a plethora of, of talent, of amazing talent who've gone on to do some incredible things. So has anyone stuck with you that's been an MLW before? Oh, I mean, every, every class, every generation in MLW, you know, there's, there's those guys and those women that stand out as like, you know, pretty special. And, you know, the last class with Jacob Fatu, very, you know, a rare breed, very special. And before him, you had, you know, the, the MJFs and very special and way back, like I said, CM Punk. So for this generation, you know, I look at guys like Alex Kane. I look at guys like Akira uh, as like, they got a real bright future in, in the sport. You know, Akira is a guy that can mix it up and do catch wrestling and also do death matches. And he's, he's very, very talented. Uh, and, you know, I look at also some of the, the talent, like we have from, from Mexico coming in, the Mascara Dorado's crazy talented. He's a young guy, super talented, very special. Uh, Star Junior is going to be a next next level guy in, in lucha. Uh, and and look, Janai Kai is so special. Uh, just I haven't seen something like Janai ever, you know. And she's got that killer instinct. She's got uh, you know this real fight presentation. He's like, you know, it's, you know, I remember as a kid going to a show and like at the time it was like Ludwig Borga came by ring, I was sitting ringside, got lucky, got ringside seats. And he just, just had to move his arm a little. And I just jumped like three rows back. I, I this is, you know, the suspension of disbelief, this guy's someone dangerous. This is something real. You know, when you, I love that. And I always try to find that and, and not all my town, but I try to find that you want a little bit of that. And Janai checks off that box. She is awesome. Uh, so, you know, she's another one that I think is going to just be for years and years Just someone you're going to enjoy watching. She's, she's a buzzsaw out there. I mean, just unbelievable striking, uh, unbelievable intensity. When you see her in Chicago, she's in a match with Yamashita, Zeta and Del Miexo. That's going to be an amazing featherweight title fight. Really a lot of fun. I know you, um, talked about a a little bit about who the top stars are, but what are your plans for MLW this year? You already have a pay per view in Seattle Stadium, sold out. Okay. Congratulations! But where do what are what else are we going to see? You know, are we going to have more Chicago shows? Is that going to be in the rotation now? What's going on, Court? Yeah, so so you know, it's been a big year. We've sold out every show since January. This is our fifth 
consecutive sellout. We've never been, had a streak, and we've had 2,104 fans in Cicero Stadium set for May 11th. Uh, we sold our toy line sold out. We can't get the figures from China to come in fast enough until the end of the summer. Uh, our hot topics deals killing it. So it's like, okay, uh, you know, just keep building on the momentum. So I can tell you as an exclusive thing right here, right now, we will be back in Chicago, November 9th. And it's going to be called uh, Lucha Apocalypto. And it's a CML collaboration. We're bringing even more stars over stars. You didn't see before when this May 11 show goes down. So it's, it's going to be a big one. That's that's incredible. I'll be ready for that one. Make sure I get my tickets before it sells out because more than likely it's going to sell out. Okay. The last time I'm telling yeah. you, I was at the show. There was not enough seats. People were standing <laughs> right outside, like by the locker room. There was it was so packed. It was incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know that you um, want to continue to expand MLW. Of course, you mentioned Hot Topic, and I remember the first time I was scrolling through a little Hot Topic page, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Is this wrestling stuff? Like, is MLW here? What is going yeah. on? How did you get that deal? And how how has that benefited MLW? You know, once you get like, it's such an interesting thing. There'll be days where I'm dealing with creative. There's days you're dealing with arenas and marketing. And then there's days where you're looking to expand and be commercially viable. And those are things like the toy deals and things like home good deals and apparel deals. And you know, Hot Topic has such reach yeah. in the apparel scene that it was like, that was one of those like white whales for me. I was like, I wanted to get a deal done with them. Uh, and, you know, it took some time, nothing happens instantly. And, and we got that deal done. So now you can go there and get MLW t-shirts. You can get our factions t-shirts, our wrestlers t-shirts. So, you know, it's, it's we're, we're working on that all the time. We're working on deals uh, right now that, you know, we'll see where they take us, but you know, we're constantly grinding and it's like, you don't, you don't know if they're going to get done, but once they get done, man, it, that's another, such a great experience too. It's the satisfaction that, you know, you can't just rely on this day and age on like the content rights deal. It's just so volatile right now. You see it now. There are companies that are doing crazy good business with those deals. Those are hard deals to get. Uh, and so if you're just relying on that and that looks a little unstable and if you look at how everything's getting disrupted with streaming, it's a little harder. Uh, to get these deals. So you want to have the great toy deal. You want to have the great apparel deal. You want to have eventually a video game deal. You want to have, we're, we're distributing in 60 countries now. Those are all important things because you just, you can't just rely on one revenue stream as your primary one because it's a house of cards. If you lose that, what happens to the company? You know, the expenses go through the roof and you have nothing coming in. So it's it's a sold out show, Court, like I've mentioned, um, but that doesn't mean that people cannot watch it at home, right? Where can our listeners right. watch the pay-per-view? It will air live on Triller TV Plus on Saturday night, May 11th. Uh, you'll be able to tune in, watch it, to subscribe. You have, there's a seven-day free trial on Triller TV and $7.99 per month. You can get all the MLW Premium Live events on there. You can get the Battle Riot next month. You can get Blood and Thunder in July. All of our shows are on there. Uh, and you can see Azteca Lucha live. If you were late, you snooze, you lose. You don't have to miss out on the show. You can watch it. And it's going to be a, it's a stacked card. You got two, three title fights. I mean, this is a big one. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll be back in November. But until then, this is the way to watch it. <laughs> this is going to hold everyone off until November. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Court. Well, Hopefully. thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to leave you. our listeners with? I just want to thank everyone in Chicago for coming out, supporting us, being patient for it's taken a half a decade to come back. But now we're back and we promise to rock the house. When you come and see us in Chicago, you know you're going to get a good deal. I mean, look, $10 tickets is a thank you, a fan appreciation thing. I'm, I'm not surprised it's sold out. Uh, but that was that was our gesture to thank Chicago for being patient. And uh, we promise we're going to always over deliver and give you your money's worth. All right, Court Bauer, CEO of MLW Major League Wrestling. Thank you so much for joining me today. I absolutely Always. appreciate it. Thank you. And we continue the conversation. It's Iridian Fierro. MLW Azteca Lucha is coming to Chicago. And joining me now is CMLL's Atlantis Jr. Thank you so much for joining me. Muchas gracias. ¿Cómo estás? Thank you. <laughs> I, it's, it's a big honor to be here with, with you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for this space. And we're happy to stay here with you. I am so excited to talk to you. For this MLW show, you're going against Ultimo Guerrero. 
How are you feeling going into this match? ¿Cómo te sientes? ¿Vas a luchar contra Último Guerrero? What's that like? Um, th this is a big commitment. Well, I feel that with a lot of energy, with a lot of adrenaline, to be able to be a single match with Ultimo Guerrero, a, a legend of Mexican wrestling. But I think I'm a young wrestler with a desire to grow in wrestling. Today, I like heavyweight champion, so I like that that opponent because they have a lot of experience. He's a big heel, mm -hmm. and I'm a good guy. So I want to demonstrate that I, that I have the talent, the aptitudes to be a good, a good wrestler. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much for CMLL and MLW for this opportunity. I think that the people likes the that match because there are like uh, Mexican wrestling, a legend Mexican that is Ultimo Guerrero and Atlantis Junior, a, a young wrestler. So I think this is a big match. Very happy, very excited because this is a big opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for for this for this match. Yeah, and and your dad is also a wrestler. So tu papá también es un luchador. You followed in your dad's footsteps. At what age did you know that this is what you wanted to do? ¿A qué edad tú decidiste yo quiero ser un luchador? Um, well, when I found out that my dad is Atlantis, I was shocked <laughs> because I I <laughs> I didn't think that many people will support him, ask for a photo, autograph. Mm -hmm. So I feel so nice, and I said one day I will be like like my father. So look, I have five years like a professional wrestler, and believe me that I enjoy it. This is a sport uh, that, that learns so much. You travel, you meet a lot of people, everything. Always you make a very responsibility, and uh, you, you make a very disciplined person. Mm -hmm. So I think so when I have five years, five years, I tell to my father, father, I want to, to, to be a professional wrestler, to train in Lucha Libre. So I'm very happy because the first day I tell, I told to, to my father, they support me a lot. That's so good. I'm some, sometimes maybe families are not supportive. So I'm glad that they were like, okay, yeah, yes. you can be a wrestler too. <laughs> yes. But my father told me, but first the school first, mm -hmm. um, finish the school bring me a career so nowadays i'm a uh, digital art animation and digital art i tell father this is the, the career so please give me the opportunity <laughs> to be a professional wrestler and he said yes of course yeah that's no problem that's amazing and you wear the same mask as your dad um was that uh would you ever think about wrestling with another mask when maybe going into the future what do you think about that uh, in the beginning, I used uh, another name because m my father told me that it's important to Fogel. I don't know how do you say it in English, <laughs> Fogel. So I have more experience. So when I have the opportunity to, to use this character, this design, mm -hmm. I have a little more experience because it's different. But when I, my, my first name is Tiburon, mm -hmm. Tiburon, Shark. But it's so different because it's like, Indie, independent wrestling mm -hmm. is so different the uh, uh, scenarios. Mm -hmm. And when I use uh, and when I put the first time Atlantis, I yeah. debuted in Arena Mexico. So it's so different scenarios, completely different. Yeah. I I love I love a lot to use the, the, this character, the, this design because when I was a kid, mm -hmm. I want to be Atlantis. And today, believe me, I enjoy them a lot. A lot of people tell me that if it's heavy to carry the name of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. And the beginning, yes, I put a lot of nervous, but nowadays I'm focusing my career. I know that my father makes that the, the history, but it's time to, to demonstrate the talent that I have inside the ring. So nowadays I'm focusing my career and that helped me a lot. So Atlantis CMLL has also worked with All Elite Wrestling and you recently had a match with Chris Jericho. Talk to me about what that was like having a match with him and being in that crowd. Yes, I'm very excited because CMLL have great alliances. Mm -hmm. uh, now with MLW and AW, I'm very happy to because we are going to take Mexican wrestling, the Mexican style to another territory. 
where wrestling is also growing a lot in the United States, to have a match with Chris Jericho was a big dream. When I was a kid, I used Chris Jericho in the WWE video games. And when CML told me you have a single match with Chris Jericho, I, I said, this is a big joke. Two, three hours past they cml in in the social media put a image my father and me versus Chris Jericho. so a lot of adrenaline nervous very happy very happy and i want to to have more opportunity more matches in aw because i want to have more experience you know uh the mexican style of wrestling is so different like the american style the mexican wrestling is so fast and jumps a lot and American style is like more punch, cross lines, uh, drop kicks. So I want and and to be and to have that that experience with Chris Jericho, a big legend of of wrestling, is is a big dream for for me. And thank you very much, Chris Jericho, for this opportunity. Gracias, muchas gracias, Chris Jericho. Yeah, it feels like more every day more and more people are being exposed to Lucha Libre. And what would you want to say to people who have never watched the Lucha Libre type of wrestling? Now, more popular have become like Penta and Ray Phoenix, you know, the Lucha Brothers. That's kind of how people have been exposed to the more Lucha Libre style. What would you say to someone who has maybe never seen Lucha Libre um, and maybe wanted to start somewhere? What would you tell them if they're starting to want to watch Lucha Libre? Okay, Lucha Libre is a very difficult and complicated sport mm -hmm. because you're exposed uh, to any injuries and high performance. But if there, is, if there is a passion for wrestling, believe me that no one will stop you. This is a spectacular sport. So it's so different like a football soccer, like a, a American, like NFL. It's so different because you are inside the ring, you make a lot of moves. So I think th this is the best sports because all the people shout, all the people, ah, the people you use a mask, the people use a paper with, with the with a name or, or a phrase that that you use. So I think that the lucha libre is the best sport around the world. And what can fans expect when they see Atlantis Junior in the ring? Oh, so I. Every time I, I get in, inside the ring, I demonstrate that I have a big legacy. Mm -hmm. I have the talent. I have the aptitudes. I have the gains to grow in, in, in Lucha Libre. Estoy consciente que es complicado. Es complicado, pero creo que I have 10 years training Lucha Libre. So I have, with, I have the best professors, the best teachers in the wrestling. So... All the uh, knowledge that, that that I have inside the ring, lo, lo voy a demostrar, lo voy a demostrar a cualquier rival, a cualquier rival que se me ponga en enfrente, sea un Chris Jericho, sea un último guerrero, sea un Penta, un Fénix, quien sea, siempre voy a demostrar quién es Atlantis Jr. Bueno, Atlantis Jr., muchas gracias. Thank you so much for joining me today. Y pues suerte en tu match. Thank you. Thank you very much for all. See you next May 11 in Chicago, Illinois, Cesaro Stadium. I'm very happy because it's sold out. Yeah. So <laughs> this is a, un ambiente espectacular. Estoy muy emocionado por, por esta gran oportunidad. And thank you very much, TML and MLW, for this big opportunity for me.